All right, folks, welcome to Nino's Corner.tv. I am joined with Sean Ryan. Sean Ryan, I think number two on Spotify under Joe Rogan from what I last saw. This guy's making waves. I consider him a friend. Uh, we both had Jim Caviezel on our show. Uh, dude, you're like one of the big, to me, one of my favorite podcasts out there. And I and I, I, I like the fact that I can call you a friend. So um, Me too, brother. Yeah, like seriously. I mean, how did, how did you hit the scene? I want to know that because... I know you're you were a Navy SEAL. Uh, what is it? A retired Navy SEAL, former Navy SEAL. What's a proper, whatever. How does a, whatever, a whatever. <laughs> I didn't retire, so I can't say that. Okay, so so you hit it big on the scene, but it was mainly for like, like uh, tactical weaponry stuff like that, right? That that's you first kind of hit, and then yeah. now you've created your own talk show, which is amazing. I've been in your studio. I've been on your show. If we're talking about degenerate shit on your yeah. show, but dude, it's a it's a fun place. It's like you have a really awesome studio. That's like the downstairs area that I'm looking at right now. But if people go upstairs, you have another whole studio up there. Uh, it's it's really impressive, man. And you're like a one man show, like I am. You're a one man show. So, thanks for coming on, bro. And let me ask you, dude. So, where are you trying to take this now? Where is Where's the Sean Ryan going? Where's the wrong? Where's the Sean Ryan show really going now? What's your trajectory? What do you want to do here? You're breaking open a lot of things. You're 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 exposing a lot of things. I'm surprised you're still on YouTube, to be honest. Yeah, me too. Uh, just real quick, I can't claim a one man show anymore. I got a I got a small team behind me, and they're they're incredible. So you're growing. So that okay, that credit. But um, <clears throat> where are we going? Man, you know, where I where, you know, it started with all military guys. You know, it was all former colleagues, and then we opened it up to a one particular boxer, <laughs> and uh, beat you. And then uh, <laughs> we just started covering. Actually, we went from military. Then we started adding in some cartel stuff. Then we started hitting some musicians, athletes like yourself and uh in corruption and um i've just been trying to like slowly broaden the broaden the horizons you know as i go and and see what my audience is interested in and 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 then that went to i'm just gonna do what i'm interested in and so you know what i mean if i'm interested in i figure the audience would be so i just i just do whatever i want now and right now i love crack it open corruption and shining the light on darkness and that's then you're starting to see the real corruption because you you see when you put things up there the real corruption is is the platform we're on right now yeah you know yeah. that's what's disturbing to me bro you brought you shine a light on like and i'm even like nervous to even bring it up on youtube but child trafficking you bring it you shine a light on that and bam they take you down and i know that that jim probably went on your show and said some terminology on there that they don't like but but the content, what you're shining a light on, that's what they decided to take down. You know what I mean? That's what they decide to bomb. Dude, it's yeah. it's disgusting. So that shows you who's really guilty here. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's uh it's pretty disheartening, you know, to to see a message like that just get pulled, you know, but what are you gonna do? Yeah, and I've also seen that on your show that you have a, you know, you're really starting to dive deep into the UFO phenomena. You know, you had Stephen Greer on your show. You've had some big names on your on your on your uh, show. Uh, you had that one guy, the Antarctic uh, uh, whistleblower. Dude, you're getting some. Let me ask you, like, this is serious because for you to put these guys on your channel on YouTube, especially. Are you the least bit hesitant? Are you the least bit nervous at all? Or like, ah, oh, man, maybe like I shouldn't be touching on this. Or are you just like, no, forget it. I'm going all in. Uh, a little bit of both. You know, I I don't worry much about. I try not to let the censorship stuff get to me. You know. Yeah. And and with the corruption stuff, I worry about it too. Like we're diving into, uh, this guy followed him for twenty years. And, um, you know, but I, I, when it comes to like the UFO whistleblower stuff, there's, there could be a couple reasons you're asking me that question. One, uh, 
Why are you asking me? Are you asking me that because I want to? People- I want to. I kind of want to steer that into what's your thoughts on that? Because I know that the government's getting ready to play that card. You know, I know that they're getting ready to push this alien card. They're gonna, and, and you know, with all the people that I brought on that that I've worked with intelligence agencies that have come out there, whistleblowers, they're all saying the same thing that they're going to use big personalities that are out there right now to push this agenda. And it's going to be um, it's going to be known as the alien threat or they're going to come in and save our planet. And we're not too far out from this. I mean, if you look right now, it's all hitting the Internet. You know, when the, you got whistleblowers coming out at the house conveniently talking about, oh, yeah, you know, we got these Tic Tacs flying around. We got uh, unidentified aerial phenomena. They're messing with our our uh, flight patterns they're they're uh, coming to our bases they're causing havoc and it's just kind of like oh how convenient right now as the biden show is uh you know they need the distractions right there's so much happening right now i just want to get your thoughts on that how do you perceive it like what do you think's happening here you've interviewed i don't know yet. you know what i mean i don't anything that i any of my thoughts would just strictly be my thoughts or not based off of any proof it's yeah, just yeah, my yeah. You know, so I'm kind of hesitant to put that out, but, you know, I'm diving into it because I'm interested in it. And, you know, there seems to be like a couple of different or, or theories of why this is all going on. It, a lot of this shit's been going on, you know, way before Biden took office, though. And I, I don't think it's necessarily I mean, I don't think it's the I don't think as much of the government knows about this stuff is a lot of people might think, you know? And so I was at that whistleblower conference that, uh, in front of the congressional hearing, you know, I actually sat like one row behind Grush and, and, uh, Graves and the other guy. And I mean, even like Grush, not Grush, but Graves and the other pilot, those, are, those guys, that stuff's been out for a long time. No, I, no, I agree with you on that. I think it's a reality. I think it's a real yeah. deal thing. But I I know that the same way that happened in 2020 with the, the with what happened, you know, we all know what happened in 2020. You can't say it on here, but I know that the next uh, big card they want to play is, you know, one being that it's uh, the climate or well, I can't even go into that because it's YouTube, but also the alien card, which is reversed uh, in reverse engineer technology, holographic technology. That we'll see things. They're going to use the media. They're going to show us stuff in the sky. That's what they have planned for a, a, I mean, that's the consensus out there amongst a lot of the conspiracy theorists, I guess you would say, uh, is that they're getting ready to play that card for the, to implement the desired reaction, which is problem reaction solution. The desired solution would be in the one world um, government, which is really hard to talk about here on, on YouTube, but, What's your thoughts of that? Or am I just, are you just not like, you, you know what I'm talking about, correct? I mean, you know, after 2020, I think anything is a, I mean, it's kind of to even say it, but nothing's off the table anymore. Nothing. You know? I mean, nothing. nothing. Look at all the stuff that going on with BlackRock and how that's, how that's been controlled. And, you know, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. I mean, what you're saying is basically the, the theory that I keep hearing is the false flag alien invasion you know where it won't where it will actually be real devastation and real people you know being killed and real buildings collapsing or however it happens you know yeah uh, the, but the theory is that it'll be man-made stuff right. Uh, that's going out there to achieve the one world government. And that's which- and that's kind of how we have to say it on here, the theory, because, I mean, it's the yeah. same people that were behind the 9-11 theory and the 2020 theory are going to be, they're capable of anything. They're psychopaths. Hmm. They are psychopaths. And and so I'm, I'm just wondering what you're, what you're getting from this. Like, what kind of, do you feel, intel are you getting within that community what can you feel like you can trust it? Like when you talk to someone like Stephen Greer or some of these personalities you've had on, what what do they say? What do they feel is coming? Well, that's Stephen Greer's big thing. You know, that's his thing is the alien invasion. That's his thing. I will tell you, you know what I mean? In this in this genre, it's like anything else, you know. Like I don't know what your boxing days were like, but I'm sure I'm sure it's extremely competitive, right? Yeah. And all the box, all the top boxers are talking shit about each other. 
right? Pretty Is much. That- yeah, I mean, yeah, there's whispers, and then yeah, yeah, it's well, that's how this go. <laughs> the more the more I dive into it, it's there seems to be like a couple of resident experts in this space that won all the won all the clout, you know. And if you yeah. talk to any one of these guys. Yep. I shouldn't say any one of these guys, but there's three main people in particular. And if you talk to any one of these guys, the other ones are all full of shit. Yeah, you know I, I mean? noticed that too. So I it, absolutely it's real that. hard to like decipher. That's in every that's in every niche. I mean, that's yeah. I mean, that's in I mean, I'm sure it was among the seals. Like, you know, oh, yeah. you know, I've heard I've heard Rangers, Army Rangers talk shit about seals. I've heard seals talk shit about Rangers. You know what I mean? But the same thing in boxing. And it's I've learned now that it's the same thing within the Patriot community. I guess it's the same thing happening amongst the alternative media. Everybody, dude. It's just this guy's good. That guy's a piece of shit. That guy's full of shit. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I hear too all the time. A, that's why I stay away from that. people. There's a lot of the I know everything and nobody else knows anything in this space 100%. In, the, in the, in this community. But I will say, um, I, I, I personally haven't arrived at any particular conclusion yet. You know, I think that maybe there's a little bit of everything, you yeah. know, I, I, yep. I mean, to think like, I don't know how much digging you've done on the universe and stuff, but I'll, I'll you want me to tell you what I think? What do you think? That I don't know. Yeah. There's just there's just no way to know. I do know one thing though, that they've lied to us forever. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's what I do know. I do know that they've lied to us forever. And I'm trying to unprogram myself or deprogram myself now. Like I've been programmed since I was a kid, going to school, indoctrination camps, going to church, doing that. I, I was programmed up until now where I'm like, wow, it's all been bullshit. And now here I am trying to figure things out and I don't know. And, and I tell my audience all the time. That's why when I go to Nino's Corner TV, I'm like, dude, I don't know. All I say is, I don't know. And you it's can okay to out. not know. Huh? I, don't you think? You know, I think it's okay to not know, and it's okay to say I don't. I don't know because there's so many resident experts out there that are just spewing out. Man, yes, you got you know the flat I mean? earthers right, and they're they they know they know it's flat, and then you got the the global earthers, and they're they know. You got the geocentric or there's, they know. And then it's just, everyone knows. And I'm like, how do you know? Because I've never been in a spaceship up in space. I don't know. I just don't know. And I'm not scared to admit that, you know, I'm not scared to say, look, I really just don't know. And, and I hope the more time, the more I learn, the more questions I have. Yeah. I just interviewed, it's actually premiering right now. uh, Brandon Fugel the owner of Skimwalker Ranch. Have you heard of Skimwalker Ranch? Man, I did want to see that. So this is like, I really, really like that interview. And I really like what Brandon has to say because everything with them is backed off of science. Okay. It's not, not, trust me, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know things I've been in this. I've been here. I've been there. It's like, yeah, but where's the proof? When you talk to a guy like Brandon Fugel, you know, who's the owner of Skim Rocker Ranch. He bought that ranch as a skeptic on UFO and UAP activity. So is um, that, what does he say that ranch is like a portal? Is it acting like a portal? Say, he says he does not know, you know? And so what they're doing, that's why I appreciate him. You know yeah. what I mean? He's like, we don't know that yet. And, and uh, but everything that they do out there, he put a team of scientists together, you know, brought it out there. He d- there's the History Channel show, which every dime that is made on Brandon's side on that show gets donated to wow. cancer research, to to nonprofits that are combating sex trafficking. And so he just bought that ranch as a skeptic, you know, to actually disprove and debunk the whole UAP, UFO, you know, conspiracy and and in fact you know quite the opposite i'm gonna put hotels on it (laughs) (laughs) we're watch next year we're like whoa he's throwing up hotels casino (laughs) but But, um but that thing you know that that's i like things that are backed by science and all that guy all of their science is documented and explained and 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 it just goes to say hey we don't know what it is yet 
but we're just going to continue to do experience and try to figure it out. But they've had one of the scientists on his team wound up being a Pentagon plant. Really? Wow. They found that out. They sniffed him out. They found that out. Well, how'd they find that out already sharing? You know what I mean? They were already opening it up to them and they still like put a plant in under the radar, you know? Wow. Of course they would. Of course they would. Yep, and they have they have lots of military traffic flying over and loitering over the property, you know. So there's definitely something there. They have all kinds of stuff on camera documented, and and so there's definitely something there. But on top of that, the interest from the government um, is just growing and growing so much. So, so that- do you think that maybe there's there's places on this planet like like Skinwalker Ranch being one of them? I've heard Sedona is one of them that are like could be like entries other dimensions or portals like Sedona I've heard is one there's a place here in New Mexico just right up the road called Lordsburg I don't know if you've mm. heard of that Lordsburg there's the Lordsburg door and supposedly it's a dimensional portal that people have seen to open in this one specific area here and there and it's called the Lordsburg door and I I do believe that they they are there are these places on on this planet that that are like that. And I'm guessing I would imagine Skinwalker Ranch would be one of them. I don't know. Right. Well, that's but. what, that's what a lot of people are saying is they think it's a portal. What Brandon did say at the end of the interview is that there is, there is. So the thing that a lot of people are calling a porthole, he is basically calling it an intelligence, some type of non-human intelligence because it's manipulating it's manipulating electronic devices. It's manipulating helicopters, planes, drones, GPSs. It's it's so it's aware that we that he's there and they're studying it and whatever presence is there is is highly intelligent. The whole is that what you're it saying? Communicated. It, it communicated. What? It communicated with them. How can you explain that? He yes. There was, um, I'm going to butcher this a little bit, um, but it's in my interview at the end. You can watch it, but yeah, people need to go over to to Sean's channel and watch this. I'm going to go there and watch this right afterwards. What, if I remember correctly, one of the scientists was thrown a bit of a temper tantrum or he was, he was just upset that all this, all of the electronics and, 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 whatever, whatever they were using to document the science behind this. Every time they start getting going on this, something fails and they do all these checks, whatever. Well, this guy lost it and had said something like, is this thing alive or like what's going on or something? And it's on his computer screen. It said, I alive. Come on, dude. Flashed on there and then went off. No way. Yep. Bro, I got the chills. Are you serious? I got the chills when I heard it too, man. But yeah, yeah. So they're thinking so that, that whole area is alive. Like it's, it's a one. It's like it's a consciousness of that area. That area has its own like consciousness. Possibly. See, I just had a guy on my show. I'm interested. I'm interested in this kind of stuff too. I just had a guy, uh, Steve from How to Hunt. You should bring him on your show too. He'd be, he's a great guest. He's awesome. Great dude, man's man. He like he lives up way up in the you know country in uh, Canada, and he's out in the mountains. And uh, he, we were talking about Sasquatch, and like we were talking about the dog man, and like the cryptoids. You know what I mean? And how real they really are. And the emails that he gets from even nuclear uh, scientists talking about that these things, these Sasquatches, show up at nuclear plants. So they're not just confined to the mountains like there's nuclear scientists studying these things that show up and look in the cameras and stuff like, like so they're able to somehow appear and transport in different places of the planet these nine foot huge ape-like creatures that have are extremely that he calls them beings that are extremely intelligent and um i was like so why why do you think they they're so uh elusive in this and that i go why and he goes well think about it and he goes well i go why do you think they're hiding this from us he goes well imagine if if human beings learn about free energy and about how able to be off the grid and, and not be in this matrix, he goes, how, how life would change for us. He goes, that's yeah. why they're so hidden. And that's why, you know, so I don't know what, 
there is so many unknown things on this planet. There's so many things that we just don't know about. And Skinwalker Ranch, every time I look at Skinwalker Ranch, don't they have creatures like that on the ranch? They've seen Skin Skinwalker would be a Sasquatch or would be a dog man or would be uh, uh, some kind of creature that we don't usually see in the wild or, or anywhere. We Right? Don't they have those beings appearing on the ranch? That's, I mean, there's, Yes, yes, and I guess I can't say no, but they don't know what it is yet. And so the and that's what I that's what I appreciate about that outfit, you know, is they don't they don't jump to conclusions and say shit before they have it verified. You know what I mean? Yes, they've seen weird things, they've had a lot of cattle mutilations, they've they've they think they may have you know, they've seen um really cold temperatures in the middle of a hot desert which may indicate some type of a porthole they've seen all kinds of weird stuff but they they can't verify anything yet but i mean essentially that's what a skimwalker is and this goes way back to you know the i believe it was the the navajo tribe um that was that's up there you know way back before any of us came along you know they've been talking about this at that exact same location in fact there's I mean, there's ancient markers. Didn't you know one of I mean? the families that were there get like ran off or like just took off? Like, they were so freaked out, right? Wouldn't they, yep. Didn't they just leave the property? Yep. And they sold it to a, a big real estate mogul out of Vegas, Robert Bigelow, who did a black project with the Pentagon there. Didn't he, did, didn't he do a television series on Netflix? Was it that guy? Um, I don't believe so. I feel like I would know that if that happened, but I don't, I don't believe so. Cause it was all cause Brandon wanted the research from this guy that they discovered and he wouldn't give it up. And so there's also thought, rumors of gold on this property. You know that, right? I didn't know that. Ask him next time we talk to him. Because I've heard that. I don't know if it's, it's just rumors. I'm, yeah. I'm not just pulling that out of my ass, but I did hear that. Yeah. I, I believe you. I haven't heard that, but, um, but that anyways, that's what I appreciate about that outfit is they don't they don't jump to conclusions. They just talk about what they've discovered without any without putting any, you know, you would think you would think if there's military helicopters flying around there and all that, they would just take over that property. Like, you know what I mean? They would just what eminent domain. What would be the word where they just come in and boom, take yeah. it over? And it's now well, military actually, under military com control. Why haven't they done that? that that's what, that's the big question mark for me. Well, one is one reason is probably because it's a national it's 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 a show with that gets national coverage and it's not just a show. I mean, it's like when these when these seasons come out, it's the number one watch show. Really? Yeah. Wow. And, and so if if they were to pull the eminent domain thing, which I believe they actually just passed a law about this, that if there was uap ufo or extraterrestrial whatever on the property that then they will exercise eminent domain now if they exercise eminent domain on a guy like brandon fugel who you know i believe he's a billionaire he you know what i mean is a he's got a huge real estate empire he's got a lot of access to things that most people wouldn't have access to plus the public exposure of of the top history channel show out there Wow. You know, is it I mean, the number right one? Now? Yeah, they're no, I mean, they're number, it's the number one show on everything. It's the number one show on iTunes, number one show on Netflix. I think it's on Hulu. You know, I mean, they would be really poking the bear, you know, to pull an eminent domain card right. on. And everyone, because everyone knows now. Everyone knows. Yep. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Now, these other places, uh, I don't know. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure they'll pull that card. I mean, they're just who everybody's getting worse and worse every day, right? Right. So besides me, who's been your most interesting guest? Just kidding. So, <laughs> uh man, there's been a bunch of them, dude. <laughs> just, oh, man. I mean, You're definitely the most interesting. <laughs> the most degenerate. <laughs> yeah. But uh <laughs> I don't know, man. A couple... I just, I just love talking to you, man. I, I, you know, like I just feel like uh, you're just a salt of the earth guy, and like I, I like to see your success, man. I really do. Like it's, it's cool to watch. 
it's really cool to watch, man. Like when I saw you as number two in Spotify, I was like, hell yeah, dude. Um, you deserve it. You're you're a good guy. You're a really good guy, Sean. Um, Thank you. you know, so the Antarctica guy, that's a guy I wanted to talk about. That's the dude I wanted to talk about. So what I, I didn't get to watch the full episode, but that guy comes on talking about how they have what is it, sonar to create earthquakes, a, a machine in the Antarctica that creates yeah. earthquakes correct am i right that's what he's saying that's what he's saying so yeah you know i met these these three whistleblowers that i talked to uh from dr greer i went to he had a event at the national press club down in dc so i went to that too and um i was like man i gotta i gotta get these guys on you know whether it's all factual or not i mean I don't know. You know, I can't, I can't say that. I just, are, are they in fear of their lives? I mean, isn't there like a, a leash on these guys? That's, that's yeah. kind of where I'm like, dang, how are they just able to go on shows and spill the beans and not worry, not be dealt with? Well, they wouldn't go on anyone's show, but mine. But why? Uh, that's you have the, like, that's a good question, right? Like why? Like, seriously. I think, I think a lot of them are worried about how the media misconstrues you know what I mean? What they say. And they, I mean, I know Michael Herrera did one, I think he did one news article and I wasn't happy with how it came out because they misconstrued what he said or whether that was intentional or not. I don't know, but um, they knew that if they came here, that I was, it was going to be, I mean, you know how it is here. Man. Yeah. When, you're, you're real cut and dry and you're, you're straight to the point. You don't like, you don't interject your own opinions or, or, or beliefs on people. I, I do know that about you. Yeah. I, I like everybody to be able to, you know, formulate their own opinion without my input. Sometimes I can't help myself when we get into the political side of stuff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, how was it to, to interview Ron DeSantis, dude? Dude, it was good. You know, I, I wish he would have come in person. It would have been a lot better of an interview. Um, and originally that was the plan. And then it was like the day before I got the, well, let's just do a 15 minute zoom call. Oh, it was only 15 minutes. Yeah. And that was a hard stop. I, I wasn't allowed to go anymore. Really? So that was, that was, uh, you know, dude, I just, I think people are just tired of these sound bites and these scripted answers, you know, and I agree and, with you. It's like, why even do it? I mean, it's like, that's not going to help him at all. He would have been better off coming to your studio and sitting down and letting people get to know him. That's that's going to help his career a lot more. David, it would have been a phenomenal interview. I mean, some of the stuff the guy says, I'm just like, right on, the money. You know, I mean, yeah, he yeah. wants to go into Mexico and hunt these yeah. cartels down. I have my own opinion on the guy. You know that. You know that, right? yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> but but I mean, I think it would have benefited him by going there and like sitting. I mean, with hey, him. you know, let's let's talk about that though. You know what I mean? Absolutely, like, absolutely, yeah. Like these guys are fucking around. So can I use that word here? Yes, I use it all the time. I'm trying to clean it up. Mikasa yeah. is sukasa, but, amigo. Hey, you know, these guys have never dealt with somebody like a seal team or a team of green berets what do they but do isn't they? ron a, he's desantis with seals no he's desantis was an attorney for a seal team he ah was, really what i'm saying but you know everybody says these guys can't be stopped but they've never been met with that type of a force right. i mean what do they do? go into a mexican village and take it over with a bunch of women and oh, kids. you're talking about okay, so we're talking about the cartels right now. I thought you were talking about stopping Ron DeSantis. I'm like, from what? No, no, <laughs> no. The no. presidency. Ron I'm DeSantis. all about it. Yes. Ron, De Ron DeSantis's <laughs> plan for the border and the yeah, and okay, the but I, see, I don't believe anything different. he says. I'm, I'm. Comp that's my opinion. I think he's anybody going against Trump right now to me is, uh, I, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm behind that horse, right? I'm on that one. I'm on that one, and yeah. I know you have different views on that, and I respect it. You're one of the few people, very few people I respect on this. Okay. So, but no, but the, <laughs> but the cartels, let's talk about that for a second, because I know that they're getting outfitted right now with a lot of gear. They're getting a lot of missile launchers. They're outfitting their, their vehicles in like tanks. Like they're making them look like tanks, battle yeah. gear. Uh, they're getting ready for something. So I think they know something's coming because I think once, and I have to say it like this, once Mr. T gets back in there, which I promise you he's going to, 
when that happens, then when they go after them, it's going to be a war on here on the border where I'm at. I really think this, I think that's what they're getting outfitted for. And I know China is giving them a lot of money. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, Nino, you can prepare all fucking day long, but the minute a U.S. drone strike happens, all the little, you can make as many fucking cars as you want into tanks. But when you drop a fucking 2000 pound J dam on them, I agree. All- that, but know? that's not what I'm concerned about though. I'm concerned about the collateral damage. I'm concerned about the citizens that could get hurt. Yeah. So that's, see what they don't, don't give a shit. It. They don't give a shit. Yeah. But the that's the only thing. That let's it's like put it this way, you know. I mean, these guys they're effective, obviously, extremely effective. You're talking about the seals. You can throw a, you can throw a pro boxer out there and have him fight a bunch of junior guys all day long and he's gonna kick some ass. But the minute he's fucking dealt with another professional. It's a it's a whole nother ball a whole game. Other game. These guys right. never dealt with professionals before. You know what I mean? They just run. Are they down. recruiting? Are they recruiting? The cartels recruit like like uh, I've heard people from their special forces, their outside special forces, right? They got people that join them, right? I mean, I've heard that they're real. That they're getting more and more outfitted. Yeah, I've heard that too. I've it's been reported on my show several times as well that yeah they recruit guys like. So us. how do you think this is going to go down? Like, what do you think, in your opinion? How do you how do you see this going down? Like, when when we finally hit the brakes and shut down the border, and we mess up business for the cartels, how do you see this playing out? I don't know. I mean, I guess it all depends on who's going to do it. I can tell you how I would do it, and that would be to send in surgical teams. Like, only it's a special once again, just like Afghanistan, which went to shit. But that should have been a special operations war, and that is it. You know what I mean? And that's to, what you did. That's what you've done all your life. And so when you send a team a team of professionals in, and that's all they do is precision strikes and hit targets and take top people out, you know, that is so demoralizing for any group. You know what I mean? And so to go in there, like, we've just been playing grab ass. You know what I mean? We won't even let the Border Patrol do what they need to do. No. So if they if they get Border Patrol doing what they need to do and they unleash U.S. special operations, it will demoralize these people. They're recruiting like it will fuck everything up. You know what I mean? Because leader after leader after leader. Here's 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 my thought. That what yeah. I think is also very possible is that and I've talked to a lot of people about this is that the, the amount of immigrants that are coming over here right now. I think they're cells. I think a lot of them, I've seen the the men coming here. Dude, dude, drive down Paisano. If you ever want to come to El Paso, I will take you to the bo- the wall here, and you'll see dudes doing acrobatics over the wall. And I'm talking, they jump, and they land, and they are military-age dudes darting, playing Frogger across the freeway, making it to the other side, getting picked up by vans and hauled ass out. That is not a family. That is not a, a kid, a mother and a dad looking for work here. This is serious stuff, what I've seen. And I have seen it with my own eyes, these people coming here. And I'm t- I saw this one guy jump over a fence and crouch down, scouting the traffic. He had tattoos all over his face. And he looked at me as I drove by him and just stared at me in my eyes. That was a killer. That yeah. dude was a killer. So I know what's coming here. So my thoughts are, I think they're going to be, I think they're going to be activated. I think they're looking to be activated at the right time. What's your thoughts on that? I mean, I don't have any proof, but I would say that if they aren't doing that, it would be foolish on their part. If I was in charge of them, I would have been putting that in motion a long time ago, you know, because it's that easy. Why wouldn't you? The border's wide open. Yeah. What do they want? I mean, what do we see going on down there? It's all turf wars, right? Well, the whole United States is a ripe piece of turf that hasn't been claimed by any particular, you know, cartel as of yet. Not that I know of, you know what I mean? And I know so, in Albuquerque, I know in Phoenix, they're setting up labs galore. Like, I mean, this is like, and you know, everyone says like, oh, Paso's terrible, this and that. I'm like, dude, they're, they're leave. They're not staying here. They're going. Nobody wants to stay yeah, Well, I mean, who's going to combat them anyways? I mean, the yeah. FBI is too busy looking at Trump's mattresses to see if he ripped the mattress tag off so they can indict him on that now. Yeah, you know? exactly. Shit's no, this is, so I do see. We have nobody going to bat for us. Nobody. Nobody's protecting us. You know, I see this. All an agenda now. 
Right. And I see this getting real out of hand fast because I think once, once this climax is, and I'm sure you see it too, it's going to be hell, dude. And I've heard rumors from people that I've talked to, you know, this, like I said, I don't, I can't validate it either, you know, but I've heard that we could lose, you know, I've had people like Wano Saban on the show and the ghost and people that I, you know, Scott Bennett, this and that, they've all said 13 to 15 cities in, in the United States have been gamed out that we could lose 13 to 15 cities due to the chaos that's going to ensue when this finally climaxes. So that tells me there has to be some kind of cells that are going to be activated to cause chaos cause the desired riots, cause the desired looting, cause the desired crime, and who better than immigrants? I mean, David, they're not even going to be met with it. I mean, we've all, look at all the cities we've already lost. San Francisco, Los Angeles. You saw New York. Was that last week? Yeah. And Square was yeah. like completely overrun with whatever that was, looters. Right. You know what I mean? We lost... What else? What else have we lost? Chicago, gone. And these I'll aren't even... It. Now, 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 wildfires... <laughs> Yeah, sure these aren't, but what I'm saying is these aren't even orchestrated attacks. This is just from, I mean, what you're seeing basically is, hey, this is what your defund the police movement did. Right. Well, you you like that? Look at Seattle. Look at But Portland. I mean, I think that's all engineered. It was all strategically engineered for where we're going right now. It was sloppy, though. And so what I'm saying is when you're when you're talking about 13 cities, I mean, that's going to be orchestrated, well planned out by cartels. I'm sure it's going to be, I guess I can't say I'm sure, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's all in blue cities, in blue states, because guess what? The police have been completely demoralized. They'd already get their asses handed to them by the cartels. Yeah. Now, now you've got guys, I mean, they're not going to do anything. Even if they did do something, the their own citizens would leave them out to dry. You'd see all these cops going to prison for getting in, getting in. They can't. They can't. With yeah, their, their hands are tied. Oh, you and, and notice, but have you noticed also the Biden administration, the people? So I think that's all. Have you noticed that, dude? I I. I mean, because what? Here's what I think. Because when these shooters come over, these 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 uh you know, let's say Mexicans or Latin Americans come over here and they Soldiers. start and they start to you know shooting whoever, they're gonna say, Ooh, white supremacist, Israel Lopez, white supremacist, uh Eduardo Gonzalez Dominguez, white supremacist. They're already they're already starting with that. So I think they're gonna start blaming these and this is all theory. On my part, all theory. I'd be first. Well, it's not theory. necessarily theory. I mean, they called the black police officers that murdered the Racist, black white supremacists in Memphis, Tennessee, white supremacists. There you go. How you call a black police officer a white supremacist is beyond me. But you know, I don't know how many people are actually buying this shit anymore. I I don't actually know anybody that that's buying this shit anymore. But I, mean, I guess some people are. I just don't know them. Do you see people buying this stuff? Uh, I don't know anybody personally, and I don't want to know them. To be honest with you, <laughs> I, I don't want to know them. <laughs> I stay away from people, bro. I don't. I don't really associate with anybody anymore. Um, especially if they come up wearing a face diaper, I walk the other way. But um, you know, it really is. It really is getting to that point. But <clears throat> you know, Sean, I, I don't want to take much more of your time, dude. I just wanted to to get a you know meeting of the minds and see where you're at with all this, and it's very interesting. And I love to see you grow. Consider you a friend. Uh, I wish you the best with your with your show, and I know you're a busy guy, so I'll, I won't give much more of your time. But uh, where do people find you? Obviously, if they don't know who you are already, John Ryan Show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have Patreon. Yeah, we got we got Patreon, Vigilance Elite. If you just any social media platform, type in Sean Ryan seven six two Vigilance Elite or Sean Ryan Show, and it's gonna come up. So good talking to you, brother, and uh let's stay in touch, all right? All right, brother. All right, good talking. Thanks for having me.